Well, what's all the fuss about? Game, set and match, Charles. <laughs> well, where are we all going? How about the villa? What about Daddy? Daddy's away in London on a business deal. Daddy wouldn't like it. No, but so would. Forgive me, you two, while I take a cold shower. Why don't you cut in? How about that, Colin? No. <laughs> I think that might be quite nice. Well, I'm going to settle down with a good book. Mr. McGill, the man Doe wants to see you. Wants to see you right away. Hey, why don't you just come in and make yourself at home? Better get shaved and dressed, Mr. McGill. I had. Where are you? One of these guys that just takes yes for an answer? That's it. This is Mr. Mandel. He's a very big man in his part of the world. Well, what part's that? Not a humoresque on the cap. What's he want with me? He'll tell you. Oh, not now. Make it later. You better get shaved and dressed, Mr. McGill. <sighs> this evening at the earliest. You better get moving. Let's make it tomorrow. You're going to move. <laughs> 
You move now. Were you kicked out of American intelligence because of your independence or because of your arrogance? Who have you been talking to? The man who recommended you for the job. Yes, Mr. Mandel? Miss Grant, what has happened to my call to New York? Engaged, sir. That's no man. Is that the job? Sue, my daughter. Lord on mercy. Congratulations. Don't congratulate me. She's running wild. In what way? In every way. Ever since she left school. At the moment, she's running around with a couple of confidence tricksters. They've helped themselves to $20,000. Have your money? From the wall safe. Still no reply from New York, sir. Ring me as soon as you get through. They were playing in here last week whilst I was away. I mean, they... Crack the safe. My daughter has a key. You mean she helped him? She denies it. Well, did you call the police? No, Sue may be involved. I just don't know her anymore. Well, what's my job? Just recover the money? Part of it. And what's the rest? I want to know all there is to know about these two characters. What's happening to her? I want a detailed report. I'm going back to London, but I expect you to keep in touch. Well, $300 a week, plus expenses. <laughs> Not only do you have twice as much as the other girls, Sue, but you make it go twice as far. I have twice as much practice. I was just thinking, how about going out on Firebird this weekend? Ah, oh, great idea. We could take in the islands. No, it's not on. Daddy's orders are not to let you on board. Daddy doesn't still think we pinched his money, does he? Hmm. He does. It's too much, Sue. It is, really. Ah, oh, never mind. He'll soon come round. All millionaires have nightmares about him. I, um, I generally dream about the ladies. Me? Occasionally. Would you care to dance? I don't think the lady does care. You mind if the lady answers for herself? Look, I don't think you've quite got the... Or does the lady speak for herself? It's all right, boys. I'm a big girl now. He's an operator. He's small time. No problem. Jackets. 
small time. I'm sorry. It was an accident. No, you keep it. It'll bring you luck. I have another one. What do you think, Colin? Time for a little fun. A little fun, indeed. Charles, don't start anything. It's quite all right, sir. Excuse us. Yes. It's got to be faster than that. Has it occurred to you that your gesture could be interpreted as an insult? As an insult? Inferring that the lady was worth 25 cents. We expect an apology. Well, I said it was an accident. It's a silly little game. And you shouldn't play silly little games. Yes, it's a very silly small-time game. OK, it's a very silly small-time game. But I'll bet a 1,000 francs neither one of you can do it. I don't be frightened. Charles was convicted of fraud. He bounced a few checks, did about 12 months. He also abducted a 16-year-old girl. More recently, he's been in trouble for beating a woman half to death. The other boy? Well, his family disowned him. My money? Well, there's no doubt about it. They took it. It's very easy. They just lifted the key from Susan and went right into that primitive safe. Charles needed money for the payoff of the woman, so I suppose most of it's gone by now. And what about my daughter? Well, she's fast becoming the playgirl of the Western world. What can I do? I'm no social worker. You're a father. I've been too busy. Doing what? Business. You see, I'm a widower. I just haven't had the time to... You'll get a statement of my expenses. You've got to help me. Please. I can't turn Sue into Snow White. Can you prove that those boys stole the money? Well, that's a police matter. No, I mean, prove it to Susan. Show her that those friends of hers have stolen from me. I just don't think it'll make any difference. It has to. $300 a week plus expenses, plus 2000 for information leading to their arrest and conviction. Old business, aren't you? Old business. Well, Sue told me it was money that made the world go around. Wonder where she learned that. Well, it's our old friend. Mr. McGill. Hello, David. Well, it is nice to see you, sir. Well, your place hasn't changed very much. No, we try to keep the standards up, sir. Mm. Well, I'd like to get my old suite again. Yes, well, that is going to be a little difficult, sir. I mean, we didn't receive a booking from you, and it is short notice. I understand, but I do feel that some arrangement could be made. Don't you think so, Dave? Well, I... Yes, let me just have a look over here, sir. Just see if we can... Fit you in somewhere? Yes. Yes, we can manage it, sir. If you'll just sign the register, sir. Thank you. I have some calls coming in from Rome and Paris. Mm -hmm. I'd like to get them as soon as they come in. Right. Just contact me wherever I am. Yes, I will. Oh, you better put this in your safe. Yes, I think I'd better give you a, a receipt for this, sir. Well, send it up to my room. Intriguing. And don't forget I those think. calls, David. I shan't. Ben sunk. I 
think it's time for a little confidential chat. Hmm? With him. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'll see you later. Well, why can't I come? Later. Uh, <clears throat> Sir. My dear friend, I wonder if you could oblige me with a little information. Sir? Oh, yes, I think we might be able to help you, sir. I just can't stop dropping things on you. You're trying to make me angry or something? No, I'm not. Just the opposite. It's okay. We can talk now, because uh, we're not dancing. You're very persistent. Let's say interested. Why? Because I don't have much time, and I'm attracted to you. What's so attractive, anyway? <laughs> Are you kidding? Oh, that. Well, is there more? I don't know. What do I call you? McGill. And your first name? Mister. Oh, like the Parthenon and Liberace, you have no first name. What do you do for a living, dear friend McGill? Make money. What do you do? Spend it. On what? Fun. That's all? Absolutely. 24 hours a day. Posing for eight hours sleep. Sometimes. Well, with all that time for fun and your two friends there, you ought to be pretty happy. Very. Good. What time are you picking me up tonight? I'm not. You're not? No, I have a date. Ooh, could you break it? Yeah. Will you? No. Why not? Pleasure. I see. Good afternoon, gentlemen. You're not running off, Mr. McGill. Oh, you know my name. Why, the whole hotel is fluttering over you. The young, rich, uh, rather mysterious American industrialist. Are you fluttering? Oh, by the way, I, I did want to apologize for Colin's rudeness the other night. <laughs> I really don't know what got into him. It's all right. Forget it. Excuse me. He brushed us off, Charles. He'll be back. Charles? He's not small time. Neither are we. Mm. Come in, Miss Brown. Mr. McGill is expecting you. Thank you. Miss Brown. Yes. I'm a girl. Yes. Would you care to sit? As you say. Oh, would you like a drink? Anything. This isn't your house, Mr. McGill. And don't be concerned, because I work for the owner. He gave you the key. Mm-hmm. It's all right. I thought it would be better to meet here than my hotel, so we'll have more privacy. And nobody will see us together. That's what I said. On the phone, you said you wanted to pay me for some information. Right. Well, that's all I've got to sell, Mr. McGill. Now, I never doubted that, Miss Brown.
Daniel Charles Wright Bell. Not really. I've seen him around once or twice. And that's all? Yes. Well, a month ago, you accused him of assault. I was mistaken. I'd like to know all about your mistake. How did you learn about me? From the police. It's a matter of record. Then what can I tell you that you don't already know? I won't know that until you tell me. And, uh... I don't think it should take but a couple of seconds. About a month ago, I was assaulted by a man. He beat me very badly. It was dark, and at first I thought that the man was him, but later I knew I'd been mistaken. But you told the police that it was Charles Hart and Bell. You filed a complaint. They were ready to prosecute until you changed your mind quite suddenly. Because I'd made a mistake. It's as simple as that. And it's very simple. Because without your testimony, the police had no case, so they had to drop it. Right. Would you like another drink? No, thank you. I have to go now. You promised. I don't pay for lies, ma'am. And I'm not used to lying, Mr. McGill. It shows. Now, how about the truth? I've told you everything. You've told me nothing. Now, how much did Charles pay you? Mm -mm. You're wrong. Wasn't it more like you told the police? Charles asked you out. He's not a bad-looking guy, and he seems to be rich. But he has a strange idea of how to behave on a date, because he nearly beat you half to death for no reason. And when the police found you, that's what you told them. And they were ready to prosecute. And so were you, till Charles sent his runner, offered you some money, and you weighed the alternatives. Money or revenge, and you took the money because it buys more groceries. Now, isn't that more like what happened to you, Miss Brown? At least when he beat me, he was drunk. You're not drunk, are you, Mr. McGill? You know so much, why did you have to see me? I had to be sure. Oh, yes, of course. I wasn't thinking. You have to be sure. I should have put him in jail. He'll do it again, and worse, to somebody else. Take it. Yes. Yes, sir. I always take the money. Particle returns. The girl's the name. Oh, dear. Oh. Don't you do anything I ask? You just keep trying. Where have you been the past few days? Harris. Ah, and what goes on there? Pleasure. What goes on here? Yeah. Not much. He's after Sue again. Or is Sue after him? Well, your two buddies are still around. Yes, it's still around. Well, the day still has 24 fun-filled hours. Oh, 24. Well, what are we wasting time talking for? Let's just... Indeed. Let's go for a swim. Oh, no. Come on. No, 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 I don't want to swim. <laughs> She's wiggling off the hook, to use an elegant expression. And just relax no, and let I yourself just... go. Oh! I think so. Time to move on? Not yet. Not quite yet. We need more cash, Colin. And soon, very soon, we're going to need it desperately. <sighs> we can't dip into the safe again. We can't even get into the villa. Ah. But there's Mr. McGill. Dear, rich, American hard currency, Mr. McGill. He won't be easy. More's the fun. Is it nice? Yes, it was lovely. <laughs> well, do I have to ask you this time, are you going to ask me? For a date? Oh, well, tonight? Uh-huh. Well, you two buddies wouldn't be too happy about that. Well, who cares about them? You better watch out. <laughs> Maybe you'd better do that. 
I think. Don't think. Just listen. Well, I was just going to say that... I said, listen, and I'll tell you what we'll do. Ow! Let go, you're hurting. Listen. Oh, yes, all right. Thank you, dear boy. Now, this is what we'll do. Good to see you again, McGill. Thank you, Charles. And now you know my name. Oh, yes. You're quite famous in your own way. My notoriety is deserved, I assure you. Sue. Mm -hmm. Colin asked me to send his apologies. An old friend suddenly emerged, a schoolboy chum and all that. Oh, what does she look like? No, no, it's a man, I assure you. And this afternoon, Colin must take him around the usual tourist sites. Oh, I know, it's a bore. And tonight, tonight it's poker, I'm afraid. Kemp insists on his poker. Oh, he's Kemp very rich. Very. Oh, he's a friend like an old friend. Well, I'll leave you two. I must get my rest. When we go into these poker games, they're likely to last all night. Goodbye, McGill. Cheers. Oh, uh, McGill. Uh, I'm sorry. You must think I'm awfully rude. Of course, if you'd care to join us, you'd be more than welcome. Well, I thought you'd never ask. Then you would like to play. I wouldn't care to miss it. Marvellous. Come to think of it, you are carrying some of my money. Well, maybe after tonight I can carry some more. <laughs> my place at ten, as soon knows the address. Sure. As you're a newcomer to our little circle, I think perhaps I should warn you. We're rather expert players. Well, I wouldn't want to waste time with beginners. And the stakes are high. Great. The sky's the limit? Just what I had in mind. Split. You're late. Well, the traffic, Charles, was simply murderous. A flaccid, you sent for me. My dear Kemp, you're exactly the right mixture of brains and brawn, uh, particularly the latter. <laughs> Still the humorist. Just do your job. The squeeze? Exactly. We let him win for an engaging period of time, and then, uh... uh what happens? <laughs> I do find your naivety somewhat disturbing, Colin, sometimes. In fact, you're often positively Juvenile, they explain to the child, Kim. Well, it's very simple. We let your American friend imagine he's having an extraordinary run of luck. Then, when Charles gets a good enough hand, he gives us a signal and we start raising. How high do we raise? We go on forever. Encourage Mr. McGill to throw in everything. His New York apartment. His Texas oil wells. His teenage sister. We take the lot. <laughs> By the way, Charles, I think you should have at least three of a kind before you take off. Make it a straight. I'll, um... I'll stroke my furrowed brow when I have the hand. Charles, uh, do we both stay? Of course. But I want a signal back that you know the squeeze is on. Then we really rock it. Well, I'll run my thumb against my chin. It's my most natural gesture. And I'll put my hand on the table, uh, palm downwards. Well, what happens if he chickens out? We go on. And take him legitimately. We take him. One way or the other. Take the bags upstairs. Very good, sir. Who's that? Her. Sue. Who are you expecting? Your thieving friends? Yes, I'm in league with them. We were going to carry off all the furniture. Make me a drink. Your requests are always so gracious. A strong drink. What brings you here? 
I have a couple of days. Good for you. And you? Why aren't you at the casino or one of your nightclubs? Well, the truth is, I've been stood up for a poker game. You must be losing your charms. Or have Charles and Colin found a new target? No, I have. Number 606, I believe. Shall I tell you about him? You're always so interested in everything I do. Everything that you do has that certain sameness. Yes, not like you. You live in the straightforward, uncorrupted, but fascinating world of business. And how is business, Daddy? Foreclosed any mortgages lately? I'm going to bed. Oh, not on my account. I'm very tired. It's been a long day. Mm. You're not as young as you used to be. Neither are you. Will I see something of you whilst I'm here? The next two days? Yes, two days. I don't know. I'm very busy. Good night, then. Good night. I'd like some action. Who wouldn't? It's left to you, Colin. Well, uh, I'll pay to peek. Fair queens. Better than my nines, eh? This is getting monotonous. Well, it's just luck plus skill, General. Sooner or later, I have to win a hand. Or maybe this hand. I help everyone to a drink, Colin. That's a good chap. Scotch everyone? Not for me, thanks. Wits to be kept sharp at all times, eh, McGill? That's right. Even in a friendly game? I imagine McGill thinks there's no such thing as a friendly poker game. Right again. Well, we'll do our best to keep it hostile. Eh, yeah, Colin? Our very best. Uh, now I feel more at home. I'll open. And take three. Bluffing us all, Charles? You'll have to pay to find out, I promise you. I'll take one. Miguel? I'll take one. Mm. Looks as if we may have something at last, eh? Kim? Uh, Deal us stays pat. Let's start with a hundred, shall we? Your hundred and up your fifty. That's a hundred and fifty to you, McGill. See you too and raise you too. Uh. Very well. Your two and another two. I'll see that and raise you a hundred. A thousand. I think no limit was mentioned. Oh, yes, but a thousand. No limit, right? You'll take a check, I presume, Miguel? Don't presume. Strictly cash. Strictly cash, eh? Right. If you'll excuse me. Four thousand 
and a further thousand. I think I'll have to go out. I'll raise you too. <clears throat> Miguel, it occurs to me that you probably have the winning hand. Well, I think so. It also occurs to me that when you deal, you usually do have the winning hand. Well, does it also occur to you that I'm being squeezed here? Squeezed? Squeezed! Explain yourself. What do you think, I'm an idiot? Kemp! <laughs> Charles, you could have shot me. Don't be stupid. I wasn't aiming the thing. Well, don't we go after him. No, let him scuttle away like the little rat he is. He left all his money behind, didn't he? I hit him a tremendous blow in the guts, Charles. Did you? Uh, well, let's see what the winnings are, shall we? Not very effective, were we, Kemp? Well, definitely rather slow. You know, I'm not at all sure that you two qualify for your share of the spoils. Well, he's stronger than he looks, Charles. I know. I was only joking. <laughs> it's missing. What's missing? The envelope with the money. Miguel. I must be insane. Why? If you turn me down for a poker game and I decide to have an early night, then you call me and I beat you. Like I was your little pet on the leash. Well, you're much more interesting than poker. Did, uh, you slip on the chips? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Hmm, I forgot. I'm angry with you. Good. Let's go. Where? Some place where we can talk that's nice and quiet. Right. But not too much talk. Life's too short. At 21? How do you know I'm 21? So I'm a good guesser. It's funny. Most men I meet, I know what's going on in their minds. But you don't. Don't tell me I'm different. Mm. You are. Well, that remains to be seen. I call it home, ma'am. Maybe you're not so different from other men after all. That's it. Uh, that's fine. And no ice. You remembered. Uh -huh. How long are you going to let those two hang around? I don't plan my future. Are you serious with Colin? It's a laugh with Colin. And that's all? What else? Sit down, make yourself comfortable. Sit. Whatever the gentleman says. And uh, what is the uh, topic of conversation going to be? Well, we'll start with Charles Hart Bell. One conviction assault, one suspended sentence, statutory rape. Most recently, assault with intent to kill, the charges were dropped. 
and more recent still, grand theft. Who are you? The grand theft is from your father. They stole $20,000 from the safe in the villa. Oh, you're a detective. A cheap, prying, flat-footed, peephole specialist. I'm not cheap. Hired by my loving father. Charles and Colin are con men. They're educated con men. They've been stealing from your father. Oh, really? Really. Oh, what am I supposed to do? Throw a girlish faint over the deadly news? Tell me, Sherlock Holmes, what does my daddy want me to do? Well, that's not the point. The point is, is what are you going to do? I'm going. I'm going to get out of here. It's time for a, a big laugh on you, McGill. This is how you get your kicks. Messing around in other people's lives. I don't get a kick out of kicks. But that's where it is, isn't it? Daddy gets his from making money. Charles pulls the wings off flies. And me, I get my kicks through people like Colin. And you. Oh, we all know what you do. So my father loses 20,000. I don't care. I don't much care if he loses much more. He'll replace it one way or another. He hasn't proved a thing. And you, you haven't even earned your fee. It's just too bad, McGill. Just too bad. Listen. As you were saying, Sue, too bad for McGill. Entirely too bad. He's not carrying a gun, Colin. No gun at all. The last of the bare-fisted heroes. Indeed. <laughs> Don't worry, it'll soon be over, dear. Where's the envelope? Ah, here it is, dear boy. You know, we were very silly to keep that envelope. It's evidence, Charles. Destroy the evidence. That's what we must remember to do. Haven't I always told you? How did you two get in here? We, uh, we have a little gadget. Very handy. I'd like to see his face when he wakes up. And the envelope's gone, and the money's gone. He won't be able to prove a thing. If you'd really like to see his face when he awakens, I think we can arrange it. What do you think, Colin? Why not? What are you two talking about? Come on, let's get out of here. No, my dear, you don't understand. You see, there are two things involved. For one, Sleeping Beauty here knows entirely too much about us. He has a, what shall we say, a prima facie case against us. What are you doing? And for another, it's a kick. A really great kick. You'll see. Now, yes, a little music, I think. Almost time. In a moment, he'll be conscious. Defenseless, but conscious. And then he'll be able to see, to know what's happening. <laughs> How he'll fly. Out over this beautiful city. Out, and then down, down. The thrill of flight, the instant of impact. Death by misadventure. And for the three of us, down the stairs and out. Will it wash, Colin? We've washed worse. Oh, Charles, you, you're mad. Stop it, you can't. Don't Do be it. stupid, Sue. Oh, no, Charles. Don't be trying to Sue. We're doing this for you. <laughs> Look at that. 
kick. How can a girl of 21 have wasted a whole life? You get a statement of my expenses in the morning. She's off again, somewhere in the Adriatic. I had a cable. Need help, send money, just that. And what are you going to do? Send her the money. What else can I do? You could see her yourself. A reconciliation at this late date? McGill, you're out of character giving advice, especially free advice. Well, I think she's worth the gesture. She's worth nothing, nothing at all. In her whole life, she's not done a thing that's worthwhile. She saved my life. How much is that worth? $300 a week plus expenses. Look, I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean that. Yes, she did. And that's what I'm worth, $300 a week plus expenses. Now, what's Sue worth to you? Everything. You know that. Tell her that. Yes, Mr. Mandel? What number did you want? Did you want a number? Are you there, Mr. Mandel? Mr. Mandel?